My name's Carol Shelby, and performance is my business. So what's going on guys? So I'm happy to say I can finally introduce my 2014 Shelby GT500. So those who know me and who have been following the channel for a while knows that this has been my dream car for a while. Now, this is a car that I never thought I'd actually be able to purchase, realistically speaking anyway. Like, but it seemed that the stars aligned and I was finally able to pick this up. Just real quick, a little bit on the car. Of course, it is Deep Impact Blue. Uh, with the white stripes it has the recaro seats as you guys can see like it has the performance pack and the track pack on it so this car pretty much has every option on it except for the glass roof which is not something i really wanted anyway i've been driving it a good bit and i actually took it on like a 400 mile trip since i've had it but when i got it, it actually had 12,000 miles on it it was completely stopped um, it even still had the 10 year old uh, goodyear eagle f1 tires on it and of course the dealer swap those out with some newer tires i'm guessing that's a legal thing they can't have you riding around on unsafe tires but other than that the car was completely stock when i got it i'm really looking forward to uh, making some content with it and of course just driving the car because this is a car i plan on keeping for the long haul in case you guys don't know the 2013 and 2014 gt500 come with a supercharged 5.8 liter v8 of course it uses a 2.3 liter tvs supercharger makes about 14 pounds of boost stock and is capable of doing over 200 miles an hour right out of the box from the factory. And that's due to the fact that it has really long gears. It has uh, 331s in it. So it has a really long gears and that's really what enabled it to get to 200 miles an hour. This car will do over 60 miles an hour in first gear. So if you think about that, like I said, you can do the speed limit in first gear and never have to switch. Now, a lot of that, of course, is just marketing and it was to help allow you know, Ford to avoid the gas guzzler tax because this car would do you know, 24 miles a gallon on the highway, which is a little crazy when you think that it has 662 horsepower. Now, why would I want a GT500? So it actually started back when I first got my 2014 GT. Um, I walked into the dealership and right in the middle of the sales floor, they had like a black on black 2014 GT500 and I was just enamored with it from that point. But I saw the car, I, I love the way it looked, just the stance, um, the little subtle differences from the standard GT. And of course, I looked at the sticker price, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to afford that anytime soon. And I ended up with my GT. Now, during the time I owned my GT, I loved it. I actually love the S197 body style. To me, it's the best looking modern day uh, Mustang. Because for me, it's that perfect blend of modernized old school. So you guys have probably already heard a lot of the complaints about the car. It does have a live rear axle. Some of the stuff like up here on the door panel is plastic. So it's definitely not a Rolls Royce in here. But everything that you interact with, everything that you touch, feels good to the hand. And it feels like it's quality. And being that I already had a 14 GT, I already knew what I was getting. Of course, I didn't have the Recaro or the Alcantara on the steering wheel in my car. But everything else, I was already pretty much familiar with. And the funny thing is I wasn't actively I wasn't really actively searching for a GT500. I kind of wrote it off. I wanted a car that would meet very specific criteria. It had to be deep impact blue with the white stripes and the Recaro's and the navigation performance pack. It had to have all those options that I wanted. It also had to be completely stock and I wanted to have less than 20,000 miles. And on top of all of that, what seems like a pretty big list, it had to be under a certain price point. So I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind that there's no way I'm gonna find a car with all those things that meets my price point. Like, and it really just so happened as I was browsing my phone, I get a notification that, you know, there's a new GT500 on Auto Trader. And I see this car listed and I look at the price and like, wow, that's, that's a good price. But then I noticed it's in California. Now, even though I bought a couple cars, I've never bought a car that was out of state. So I wasn't really sure how the whole process would go. But just in the moment, I was like, you know what? I might as well reach out to these guys and see how this process goes, just see what happens. 
And in my mind, I'm thinking it'll probably be sold before I'm ever able to really make a move on it. But I figured, what could it hurt to just reach out and see? Because the ad hadn't been up um, but a few hours when I contacted the dealership. So I reached out, I contacted Sarah Monte Ford in California, but he got back to me, just gave me a quick uh, walk around video of the car. Hello, Jay, this is Kanapa for Sarah Monte Ford. Thank you for your inquiry on the 2014 GT500. Like now, if you guys want, I'll do a whole video on the buying experience of getting a car from California to Virginia. But the guys over at Sarah Monte Ford were really easy to work with. They sent me a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of videos. And that was really important because I never even saw this car until it had been delivered. The whole process took about two weeks after I had officially like bought it and did the paperwork. And that was the first time that I actually saw the car. Like, but I can say this car is pretty much everything I hoped it would be. Now, of course, me being a car guy, I already had mods ordered for this thing before I actually saw the car. Um, so we will be doing a few things to it. I'm not gonna go too crazy. I don't plan on doing a full build. Of course, if you know anything about these cars, you know the, the engines in them are extremely expensive. Uh, looking at like a built short block alone is you know fifteen thousand dollars like so i want to keep this just as a good fun car that i can take out uh whenever i want to i don't have to worry about it being reliable and of course you guys know i still have the galant um, i am keeping it nothing's going to really change with it like but that project is still a go and we'll continue on um, like contrary to me like building an import currently i've been a muscle car guy for a while i love v8s i love the old school feel i love the liver axle in this thing and it's, it's just the simplicity of it that makes it fun one thing i will say is i know i saw a video once before said that a guy was complaining about his gt500 he said it didn't get as much attention as he thought it would now one that seems a little odd that a grown man is complaining that his car doesn't get enough attention but it's just in a short time that i had even the first day i've had unwanted and wanted attention in the car Everything from just people trying to race consistently. You know, people taking pictures of the car. I actually had, just the other day, we had guys hanging out the window, uh, just getting, like, what I imagine, pictures or videos of the car. Um, and this is definitely one of those cars where it's like, if you know, you know. To a lot of people and to the masses, this is just gonna be a Mustang, and that's fine. But of course, for enthusiasts, you know, they can really appreciate uh, what this car is. If you wanna be that guy and really break it down, this car is like one of like 800 and something. So it's kind of rare to see these. And that's one of the reasons that I wanna make sure I keep it in pristine condition, or at least as close as possible. But I also don't want to be afraid to drive it because I kind of have the same mentality. Carol Shelby talks about this, is that he was building cars to be driven. Like one of the things that he mentioned was that he wanted this car to be like a supercar for the everyday guy who goes out and works but still wants to race. Like, and for me, I feel like Shelby and Ford executed that perfectly. Because while this car is kind of expensive, it's not unattainable expensive. It's not, at least currently, you know, over six figures. You don't have to be a millionaire to afford this car. Like, so that's really all I want to talk about, guys. I'm really excited I finally got it. I was able to get my dream car. The car that's been on my mind um, pretty consistently for the last 10 years. I got it exactly what I wanted. And now we're just going to have some fun with it. So if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.